guys being here in Deborah. Um, I've been up here about four and a half years now as the associate administrator, and, and my first memory of working with Deborah was when she decided to come talk to me about International Space Apps Challenge and the fact right in the middle of sequestration we needed people all over the world <laughs> to, to, to sponsor this. Now, I, I, my, my background is a rocket engine test guy, right? So I'm pretty risk averse to these kind of things. And, and Deborah just kept going and kept going and then she brought Nick Skitlin in, right, to help. And those two are like, I mean, I, I thought I was buying a used car. <laughs> it, was, it was really hilarious. But, but what it showed me is um, what, what Deborah has and what Deborah brought to that and, and what she's brought to so many things and the reason I picked that one, I think it, it epitomizes what, Deborah, what Deborah's done at NASA and in her previous jobs. It showed that perseverance and that actually looking forward, that innovation that she brings. If you think about it, you think about this year with the 15,000 people that we actually touched that we probably would have never gotten to. It does two things for us. It shows the power of the NASA brand and what NASA can do internationally, but it also shows the power of some folks that got some really strong perseverance toward doing what they do. The other thing I've watched Deborah do um, since I've been up here that, that is just outstanding is her mentoring of other women and her, her role model for women uh, in federal government. Um, we got a lot of work to do in this agency dealing with that. We got a lot of folks working on that, and Deborah has been incredible in terms of trying to make sure people are involved involved with that and, and bringing folks along and show, showing what it is like to be a leader in government um, as, a, as a woman. And I think that's an outstanding thing you've done for us, especially here at this agency. And then finally for me, um, the whole open data initiative and the, the whole open government initiative, if you look at the data we produce, you know, a lot of us that are I'll just say engineers and scientists, we don't really worry about other people looking at the data, we just want what we got, right? <coughs> and so the fact that we produce all that, we produce all that with taxpayer dollars, and the initiative that she's done and with Gail Allen and several others to actually get that data available to the public is unbelievable, because we take a lot of data, and we have a lot of data that can be used. And so I think Deborah leading that was, was frankly, um, one of the best things that she, that's going to be one of her legacies whether she believes it or not um, when she gets done so between the space apps challenge and, and getting our data available to the public to me that's the greatest contribution she's done the final thing that i'll add though that's all work related when i first came up here deborah was one of the one of my the, the people that would sit by me in some of these meetings and would tell me this is what the re re they're really doing right because <laughs> because I didn't know, and, and, and what you'll in, in, any of you that have been to me, those of you that are visitors don't know that where I sit, usually the two seats to the right and the left of me are empty. And I always worry I didn't take a shower or something. <laughs> and but Deborah would come in and sit, and we would talk, and I go, okay, Deborah, what are they talking about? You don't, you probably don't even remember that, but she would always tell me, you know, okay, this especially some of the some of the mission support kind of areas that I was really, again, rocket engine guy. I was really clueless on and she would remind me what we're trying to do and in the CIO world she was a great great for me to understand what we're trying to do from an agency perspective and some of the strategies we had going forward so Deborah thank you again congratulations on your retirement um, I don't think this is the last we'll see you in this in the IT world for this country or this nation um, I expect to see you show up in bed times occasionally and any other kind of news blog there is out there because I know your uh, your energy um, won't keep you away too long so we got a little something here if you'll come up this is a plaque that says um, an appreciation of 20 years of distinguished federal service including six years of outstanding leadership and exemplary technical management and support of America's space program while serving the NASA NASA Aeronautics and Space Administration at NASA headquarters good luck and best wishes signed by Renee and in here is a um, Several shuttle program pins, I think, when you were here, that flew, and, sta and space station pins, and a metal that contains uh, or a, a coin that contains metal flown on the uh, on the aboard aboard space shuttle mission. So, thank you for everything, Deborah. Renee Wynn, NASA CIO. After my press week, it's nice to have the clapping. Um, 
<laughs> it's good. So um, first, uh, Deborah, thanks for sharing your husband. And I don't know if anybody else from your family is here. Jose, it's a delight to meet you. I wish the circumstances were different, but thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be here to celebrate. So the end of someone's career, we call it the end of their career, but it's actually probably the beginning of the really exciting parts of life, right? Where you still have your health, um, and that you still in your, your um, can move around the world and, and make great things happen in your personal life. I think when, so I've not known Deborah as long as so many of you uh, here in the audience. And so um, my, my reflection on Deborah's career and our time together, I think echo a little bit of what Robert said. So uh, Deborah, when I first arrived at NASA, we had already intersected a little bit um, on some data exchanges between the Environmental Protection Agency and, and NASA. And NASA was always the envious in terms of how much data it had. And, and we at EPA, the globe watchers, right, we really wanted a lot of that data, but we had to figure out how to move that. And, and that was through exchange of individuals and stuff like that. And that's where I really came to learn how um, Deborah really applies the vision. She really sees what the future ought to be. And the rest of us are sometimes scratching our head going, what did you just drink or smoke? Because I'm not seeing that either. But through perseverance, persistence, and finding others that see that coming as well, it is her ability to bring folks together with, either with or without that vision, but at least willing to go along to open themselves up to learning from the energy that she has in terms of making some of that vision come true. And through that collective and building up this massive energy, that's when these great things begin to happen. And she saw uh, the data capabilities here within NASA and that we could do more with what we could do by sharing our data. And not only just sharing it, but showing people and giving them a place to share it. And this is where Space Apps Challenge gets born is not only do we want to share it amongst ourselves and put it out in the public, but let's teach people how to do this. And it's through her teaching and keeping and pulling the network together and building that network. More people know more people. And now more people have friends in the world because they've been brought together over NASA's data because Deborah brought them together. And underneath that part, she was always focused on not to the exclusion of the gentleman in the room, but be with the gentleman in the room. And she definitely is very focused on giving women uh, a shot at being in a world that still is largely uh, dominated, except in the federal government, uh, by men. And she always made a place for that and made sure that if the skills were missing, that she had classes. So this past year, that we had classes um, programming classes with a group of young females and men were uh, young men were there as well in order to teach them the skills so that they could then even more fully participate and gain more uh, by their participation in Space Apps Challenge. So she not only builds the world better by making more friends and collecting over NASA data, but she also makes sure that, that everybody's got some equal footing and equal opportunity to bring their talents to the table. That is something that will definitely be missed here at NASA. Um, she definitely has a, a, keeps her pulse on everything. There's many a time she swung by my office of, did you know? And you know, I'm like, huh, what? No, I didn't know. But there's a lot that the CIO never gets to know. Um, so always appreciated that she would come by and make sure they stayed in tune with that. So Deborah, I want to wish you all the best in this next phase of your life. This is an amazing phase to be both very youthful and very healthy to stride into this one. Um, and I know that you'll continue to make great things happen, and I know that you will, you will be missed each day here at NASA, but your presence will always be felt because so many of us are better connected and enriched by the data and enriched by the friendships we've been able to make here. So thank you. And I have a small gift. So why does somebody who's retired need a clock? <laughs> You need to be on time for your tea time, I suppose, but they'll give it to somebody else. Great. Congratulations. All set? Good. Thank you. Congratulations again. Yeah, I'm very excited for you. Now, Jeff Seaton from Langley Research Center, who uh, came up on the train last night. Uh, thank you for coming all that way and making it. <laughs> <laughs> all right um, but uh, 
Deb, I knew you would be dressed and look great like you always do. I put a tie on. I seldom wear a tie. I put a tie on for this occasion, so hope you like purple. Um, well, I have known uh, Deborah for a little while. Uh, she came to NASA at a very interesting time. Um, I had been up here at headquarters actually working with uh, Jonathan Pettis uh, as we were trying to map out some of the changes for the agency, uh, and some of you were involved with those. And then Jonathan Pettis left, and Bobby German was the CIO for a little bit of time. And then Bobby German left, and Linda Curriton came in. And so it was a time of instability for the CIO community, kind of, right? Because there are these big changes going on. And in our leadership, we had a, a lot of changes taking place. And that's the time when Deborah came on to the scene. Um, at a time when we were really looking at how do we do a better job for providing services, IT and information services, and innovation for an agency like NASA. And so she walked in, and I'm not sure what she expected, but a prob she probably didn't get what she expected. Um, there was a lot. Um, and at that time, I was the deputy CIO at NASA Langley. And um, one of the things that was obvious is that we were trying to move towards a more NASA-wide mindset, an enterprise mindset. And the centers were continuing to think about things like centers tend to do. And we were thinking about my center, me, 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 me. Um, and you know, Deb had a position of leadership. So she was the deputy CIO for the agency. Um, but many of you that are involved in leadership probably know there's a few different perspectives on leadership. One is positional leadership. You can be in the position and that makes you a leader. But that typically doesn't take you very far, right? And especially in an agency like NASA, um, just being in a position of leadership isn't a way that you accomplish very much. Um, it really requ requires influence. You've got to figure out how you're going to influence others uh, to align with the things that you think are important so that you can eventually have an impact. And my first recollections of Deb was her approach to influence. Because uh, she saw, yeah, NASA's making all these, looking to make all these changes in communication, end user services, applications, even how we innovate, um, but we're not coordinated. And so one of the first major things I can recall Deborah doing was saying, you know what, I'm a deputy CIO, and we've got all these other deputy CIOs around the agency. We should get together and try to figure out how we can you know, unify our forces and actually make a difference, make an impact. So she exerted her influence on all the centers by pulling together this community of deputy CIOs that had not been pulled together before. Um, and I was part of that and benefited from that, and it was a great example of leadership for me that she was taking that step. And she wasn't trying to impose, she was trying to create an environment by which we could collaborate, figure out what were some of the major issues and challenges facing the agency, and then together come up with solutions to those challenges. And I would say that that has been my uh, observation about how she has worked her entire time at NASA. It has been pulling people together to do bigger things than they would be able to do on their own. So Space App Challenge was a great example of that, right? I mean, one person, Space App Challenge isn't Deb, but it was Deborah pulling together a community of people and then seeing that community grow. And so being the you know, driving force behind that, yeah, but achieving some amazing things by pulling people together. And so to me, I think that's one of the biggest legacies you're going to leave is creating within the CIO community and across the agency a mindset that yeah, we can get together and do things that are so much greater than we'd be able to do individually. At least that's something, a message that you've left for me, and it has been an encouragement. Um, and she then went on to lead innovation. I know Tom Soderstrom is here, so I'm not going to, Tom, I'm not going to steal your thunder on that too much. but. Um, I'm now a CIO, and I have you know, a CTO that works for me, and uh, Ed McClarney. And um, I have been able to watch Deborah continue to exert that kind of influence um, in the CTO community 
um, things like Space App Challenge, but also just giving, yeah, giving centers the opportunity to bring forward innovative ideas and even if it's just for a real small amount of funding, be able to get some funding to be able to push those ideas forward and to connect people to make those ideas turn into reality has been a benefit that I've seen at Langley um, under Deb's leadership in the innovation area. Um, and um, one other thing, because I reached out and asked some different people, hey, give me your perspective on that. Um, and one of the common themes was um, hope and inspiration. So she brings hope and inspiration to others. So it's a very positive perspective. And to be honest, we can be beaten down. We can be beaten down by the data requests or the different requirements we have to live by or um, the challenges that we face as an agency. But Deb has been able to wind her way through all of that and provide an environment that has given people hope and inspiration. And so I think that's another legacy that you need to be working with. So um, now I have a gift, but my gift isn't something that I'm going to uh, be able to hand you. Um, it's actually words from others. So uh, there were three people that uh, uh, had some things that they were going to share with you but couldn't be here today. So the first one is Annette Moore, the CIO at Johnson. And she wanted to say, Deborah, thank you for your leadership in bringing together the deputy CIOs. I recall my first deputy CIO, Vitz, when I was new to my role as the JSC acting deputy CIO, and I was serving the acting capacity while Larry, the CIO then, his deputy was out on education leave. You welcomed me into the fold and quickly engaged me. I appreciate your commitment then to making the deputy CIO team a well-oiled team and giving us a voice at the table before we had one. So then the CIO at Kennedy, and actually these are women too, I didn't even connect that, but uh, I'm a guy, she's had a great impact on me as a guy, but it, the, these two current CIOs were deputy CIOs at the time. And uh, Vanessa Strummer says, Deb, you started the deputy CIO group when you were the deputy CIO for the agency and your initiative and leadership got the deputy CIOs to focus on working and resolving issues and that effort continues to help the CIOs today. You'll be greatly missed as part of the CIO community. Good luck to you and may you enjoy your future international adventures to the fullest. And then uh, last but not least is um, Kathy Mangum. Kathy was the CIO at Langley, Langley um, and she's now moved on to be the associate director at Langley. And she had wanted to be here today, but she had some family things that came up last week and couldn't. Um, so Kathy said, thank you for your service to NASA and especially your positive influence on the CIO organization. Your leadership in Washington and across the centers as both the deputy CIO and associate CIO for technology and innovation has helped to transform NASA IT and has made it what it is today. Best wishes and whatever you do next, Kathy Mango. So Deb, personally, it's a loss for me that you're gonna be leaving because you have been that inspirational influence, but I think you've left your mark on the agency. And really that's gonna be evidenced by the people that are still here when you're gone. So thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Um, you know, and it's it's very uh, ironic or uh, you know, very telling. A lot of those deputy CIOs are now CIOs. So you mentioned a few of them. All right. Uh, so, so, Jeff, somebody came a little further than you uh, to be here, and uh, he is the JPL Jet Propulsion Laboratory CTO, Tom Soderstrom. Well, it's a pleasure, and it's a sad day. It's a pleasure to see so many people show up for Deborah's retirement, and it's a sad day that she's retiring. It's good to see Jose, that, that you get to hear all the good things about Deborah. Uh, I wanted to, uh, we have some gifts, uh, but they don't like show and tell. So part of a job, when you're up here, you get a chance to embarrass people. I can't take you off stage, so let me a little bit of that. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what she has done. So I'm the Chief Technology Innovation Officer at JPL, so I'm at a center. I'm also part of the CTO community. 
And what Deborah has done more than anybody else, uh, uh, probably, at least in the CTO community, is to inspire uh, us to reach for innovation and to inspire outreach beyond IT uh, and also beyond the centers. So uh, what you've heard, of course, is uh, you've heard the story about uh, Space App Challenge. That's an amazing story. It actually started, a little bit of embarrassment here, it started a long time before that. We did a random hack of kindness in Seattle. And uh, Deborah was one of the sponsors. And it turns out that Deborah did not like to speak publicly. So I said, would you give that talk for me? So now I look at Deborah the way she speaks today, and it's marvelous. So you've come a long way, so you never know. And I suspect you will be doing a lot of public speaking. So a few examples of that outreach is uh, the big data gatherings that we have. The big data gatherings that Deborah started it's not just IT. It's IT, it's science, it's uh, technology, it's engineering. And it's not just one center, it's all of them. So that is a really big way that IT can help uh, the rest of NASA. It's very big impact on big data. Another one is uh, we had to publish data. Uh, IT had to publish data that was a presidential directive. And Deborah grabbed that and made it happen. And so now science and technology is benefiting. Another one was, uh, I came here in a panic, it's usually when I come here. Uh, we needed a cloud authority to operate. It was very urgent. And uh, Deborah was the one who stepped up and said, yes, I understand it. I can look at it. I take the risk. I understand it. And now we had a cloud authority to operate. That is benefiting all missions all the time. So that, I would say, is one big legacy that people may not know about. Uh, another one is uh, looking at innovations. Now I'm going to do my first uh, show and tell. That's very good at this, by the way. <laughs> if you're looking for innovation and what's coming, you just kind of have to ask Deborah, and she gets personally involved. Uh, and she's also a very dear friend to me. Uh, in fact, she's such a dear friend that even our minimis are friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, and one is taller than the other. <laughs> So if you come up and look at this later, you'll see the latest in 3D printing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, another embarrassing story. Uh, this one time at Bandcamp, uh, this one time at a Kennedy offsite, uh, we were, uh, the CIOs got together and I got to join. And we were, decided to play golf. So uh, Deborah and I are not necessarily the best golfers, but I think we had the most fun. Uh, we were looking for balls all over the place. We're reaching for the golf ball in the water hazard and this crop, this alligator looks up. So we decided to leave that one alone. <laughs> but we took our while. All of a sudden the storm clouds move in. It gets windy rain starts pouring down and lightning is just all over us. So we look at each other and Deborah said, we're here, let's keep playing. <laughs> so the other CIOs got so worried that send out a search party. Probably the first search party in the golf cart. <laughs> but that points to Deborah's, uh, Deborah the adventurous golfer. <laughs> and many ad other adventurous things. So uh, now my next show and tell. Debra is uh, very difficult to keep uh, up with. Uh, she moves very quickly. It was also very difficult to keep up with her retirement date. <laughs> so she came out uh, to JPL, and we had this big thing planned for retirement. And uh, she says, oh, I I'm not retiring yet. <laughs> and that was in December. Uh, so what we had is we made from the director of JPL and also the CIO a very nice plaque. And it says, uh, to, it has uh, the official seal, and it says, to Deborah Diaz, in appreciation for your valued partnership and support of the JPL Office of the Chief Information Officer, from your friends at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, December 2015. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, let's fix that. So April, OK, April. Uh, no, no, wait, it's going to be June. Oh, no, no, wait, it's going to be September. <laughs> so in reality, we never want to retire, so we didn't change it. And uh, mentally, there is no year on there, because you'll always come back and add value to us. 
So I want to thank you for that. Now I have some more show and tells, and for that you need to come up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she has many friends at JPL, and we know that she is uh, is a card. She, we know she's an adventurer. We know she's a traveler. Uh, always something unexpected, something fun. So what? I have two daughters. So what could we possibly get? Clothes. <laughs> so, but not just any clothes. It needs to be with a JPL logo, so that she will remember us at JPL and remember she's always welcome at our house, at our table, and of course to JPL. So first, nice brash hat for the sun, in case it's bad weather, or good weather. Then a golf shirt, very nice golf shirt. And then, remembering the Florida trip, uh, weather resistant jacket. <laughs> and the only thing we ask in return, we always ask for something in return, is that she sends us a postcard, and this is, by the way, from Jim Rinaldi, Mag Palmix, Gabriel Rangel, and myself, uh, with her very new, very colorful JPL space pack. Yeah. <laughs> so on, on behalf of all the centers and CTOs, and uh, of course JPL, uh, we are very sad to see you go and thrilled to hear about your new adventures. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, Dan Chenek is the executive director of the IBM Center of Government Business. He would like to say a few words. Thank you. And, and it was really an honor for Deborah to call and ask me to, to talk about something, which is a bit of a gift. It's, it's a, a gift of time. It's not the time, Deborah, that you and Jose will have uh, together uh, henceforth um, as you uh, move into the next phase of your career. But it's a bit in the NASA tradition of a bending of the space time continuum. Um, so I'm going to take you back to a time when Deborah was really one of the framers of e-government in the United States. And uh, this story really starts in Davos, Switzerland in 1998 at the World Economic Forum where President Bill Clinton was standing in an elevator. And uh, some of you may remember the search engine Inc. to me uh, in the 1990s, uh, one of the big search engines. Its founder, a guy named Eric Brewer, found himself next to the president, and he had been saying, what can I tell the president if I ever meet him? And he decided to tell the president, I can actually build you the first US government-wide portal that had never existed before for a dollar. And President Clinton came back and asked his staff, and they said, well, maybe we should take the guy up on it, right? It only costs us a buck. And so he turned to GSA, to Dave Barron, the administrator, and Dave turned to the CIO, Bill Piat, and he said, we have an offer to build this website for a dollar. Um, and uh, Bill Piat uh, then uh, said, I know the perfect PM who can build what had been thought of as a $6 million project for a dollar in 90 days. Uh, and uh, that's when we met Deborah Diaz. Um, uh, Bill introduced Deborah to us. Uh, GSA got together uh, with OMB, at, where I was at the time as the uh, IT and uh, policy and budget uh, leader at, at that office at OMB. Uh, and we worked with GSA and the National Performance Review, Vice President Gore was very involved. And Deborah was really the quarterback of the creation of what was then first gov that became USA Gov. She was the consummate PM. All of the skills you've heard about today were clearly in evidence there, working across agencies, working with White House staff, with deputy secretaries, with the President's <coughs> Management Council, to really make this happen, working with a, a dedicated team, and I see some familiar faces in the room who were there at the time who remember remember this process. Deborah made the project happen in 90 days for a dollar. On the day, on the weekend of the launch, it was September 2000, there was a glitch in the software. And because we were working with a private sector partner, Inc. to me, there were only a very few people that actually knew how to fix the glitch. And Deborah, uh, actually speaking of search parties, sent out a search party to an apple orchard in a mountain range in some state out west. Oh, okay, some state in the east, um, and, and found the programmer, pulled the programmer off the apple orchard, who gave the fix to the code, and FirstGov went live the next day. <laughs> so continuing this, so we were at a time, it was September 2000, just like now there was a presidential transition and we knew there would be a new president. 
And there was concern about what would happen to the fate of this very significant initiative that so many people had worked on. Uh, and Deborah and a number of us who were sort of career staff who had worked on this kind of said, we can't let this die. Um, Deborah actually flew all night uh, to brief uh, Mark Foreman, um, who many of us know, uh, as he was coming in to talk about the value proposition of this portal to the U.S. government and to the burgeoning uh, initiative around e-government across, across the government and really across the world. And it was that briefing that kind of sealed the deal for the new administration. So we have Deborah in many ways to thank for the continuation of the foundation of the e-government movement into the new administration. Um, uh, Deborah also, when the new administration actually woke up and realized, hey, this is a pretty cool thing, they said, let's have our own White House launch. And Vice President Cheney, that paragon of technology innovation, um, uh, was uh, basically worked with GSA. And uh, there was an event set up in the White House where the Vice President was sitting at a podium. Actually, I think it was a table kind of like that. And there was a screen with the um, with a sort of a green screen, and FirstGov was there. And we had worked, Deborah had led the work on with the team on redesigning uh, FirstGov. And the Vice President was to push the button and then up on the screen came, well, the button actually was just like a piece of paper. So the vice president pushed the button uh, in public, but behind the curtain, Deborah was actually working with the team to bring the site live in the new administration, uh, and that was a great, a great event. So thank you to, uh, to Deborah for that. Um, uh, since that time, of course, you've heard about Deborah's many accomplishments. Uh, I, there are many people here from the IT community, from industry, who have been in and out of government and worked with government. Deborah, you've really been a great leader and partner, mentor and friend to so many of us. You have really brought the community forward, both at that time and since, in many ways, uh, in addition to the great work that we've heard about here at NASA, uh, across the government. Uh, and you've really been a great partner uh, to so many. And we wish you the best. We welcome you to the next phase of your career, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. And finally, Luke McCormick, the Department of Homeland Security CIO, would like to share a few words. Thanks for having me. And uh, Deb, thank you for all your service on behalf of you know 300 and some million Americans. Uh, for keeping this country safe and uh, you know I, I don't know if I've ever met somebody that was so active before they retired except uh, a few of these ladies in front of me here and uh, I, uh, I don't know if I envy you or I pity your husband for uh, what you might do uh, post your retirement because of all the energy she has and all the fun things that I'm sure she has in store um, you know I, I can't imagine what it must be like be the CTO of an organization that has the brain power to put a spacecraft on Mars. And um, uh, all the brains that are in this room and in this building and across the, uh, the community, uh, I, I think about what, uh, you know, prepared perhaps uh, Deb uh, for that journey. And uh, um, I think about uh, sort of where we met. And uh, where we met was, uh, I don't have to uh, explain to a lot of you, I see a lot of familiar faces, is, uh, you know, that, uh, that dreadful day in, in 2001, uh, in 9-11, uh, uh, where we had uh, uh, a bad situation. And then, uh, you know, fast forwarding a little bit, uh, there was a call to arms. And uh, Deb, like many people, got the call and said, hey, we need you over here to help us uh, keep this country safe. And, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, she said, you know, where do you want me to be and when do you want me to be there, right? And it's that spirit of just, uh, hey, I I'm there. I'll get on the plane, I'll go all night, I'll do what we need to do. And uh, she came in under uh, the enterprise architecture, uh, but quickly uh, uh, ended up in our science and technology organization as the chief information officer. Now, if you can imagine what that must have been like as we were trying to s assemble that community together, many of you are out there that uh, were part of that. Uh, that was um, a lot of uh, turmoil, chaos, and uh, a lot of concerned Americans. And uh, there was a lot of technology that was coming together very quickly. And there were, quite frankly, 
uh, a lot of uh, very smart people and very smart vendors and, and, and people up on the hill and others that were trying to encourage us to use a lot of different types of technology and assess that technology to screen uh, for getting the right people on aircraft and the wrong people off and the right cargo into this country and the wrong cargo out. And Deb was right smack in the middle of that, making sure that we were putting a program together that properly assessed that capability, did it very quickly and fairly uh, with the poison elegance that only Deb can pull off. And so if you think about her career and all the things that she did to sort of get to that point, uh, I could see how she was able to do that uh, without a sweat on her brow, so to speak, uh, which was uh, very complicated and, and not trivial by any means. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security is 100% better for all the things that you have done, and this community is 100% better, and, and 300 and some million Americans are a whole lot safer for a lot of the things that you put in place, the framework you put down in order for us to examine that type of technology and make sure that uh, we do the things that we do. So on behalf of all of us, I can't thank you enough. I have uh, uh, what is the, uh, you know, the, uh, somewhere in my pocket here, a, uh, well, maybe I don't have it. <laughs> I have the uh, coveted uh, DHS coin. I'll have to get back to you on that. Because, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Luke. All right, so now uh, T and I and OCI will have a few gifts that we'd like to give you, Deborah, if you could come up. Uh, but first, I'd like to just say one, one word. Um, uh, a letter from the White House congratulating Deborah Diaz. Uh, we'll be here in about two weeks. It takes uh, quite a long time, way longer than we would have imagined. Uh, so, so thank you. And as soon as it comes in, uh, I'm going to make sure you get it. It's, it's actually being sent to NASA. <laughs> All right. Um, so Beth, Beth, you want to come up? 